Hey, brothers and sisters. So today I felt led by God to share the season that um, me and my family are going through. And I feel like this is going to help somebody out there that is listening and somebody that's struggling with the same things. Now we know in the body of Christ, each one of us is experiencing intense, intense spiritual warfare like we've never uh, experienced before. And I think that's because a lot of us are really pressing into the Lord, seeking the Lord's face and drawing near to Him, seeking Him in His word, in prayer, and of course, the blessed hope that is right before us. But during this season of waiting, it can be very difficult to see what God is doing. And I wanna encourage you, brothers and sisters, that if you are going through a season similar to what I am gonna describe to you, to take heart, to take heart in the promises of God. So right now, I am in a season of waiting and trusting. Now, just to give you an an idea of the type of person I am, because obviously uh, you've never met me personally, I'm the type of person that's very proactive. I love to plan, I love routine, and I love to rely on the resources that are tangible. For instance, whenever the Lord called me to get a job, I would always be looking very intently on the job, securing things. I'm a planner, and I love to know what's ahead, what's on the other side. But the Lord has put my, me and my family in a season where it's much like the children of Israel. The children of Israel, if you look at the, the, the route that God had them travel on, it was a desert land, and right now I feel very dry. I don't really feel like the Lord is really speaking to me. I, I, I feel like He is purposely silent, and that is scriptural. Sometimes the Lord does not speak to us to build our trust in Him and to test us. But the children of Israel went through these mountainous range before they reached the beach where the Red Sea was. And they didn't know it was on the other turn. They would turn and they didn't know it was on the other side. And finally, when they reached that beach, they were up against the Red Sea. And what was behind them was fearful because Pharaoh's armies was approaching them. But what was ahead of them was so unassured. Now us looking back, we know God parted the Red Sea, but the children of Israel had no clue how their deliverance was going to come. And that's a lot like you and I, brothers and sisters, or at least for me in my season. Right now, I'm caught between two worlds. My citizenship is in heaven, where I long to be with the Lord. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be on this earth. I want to be with my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to be raptured. But I know that as long as we are here, we have jobs to do. We have work to do. And at times we go through these dry seasons where God is not speaking to us and he's wanting us to trust him. And we feel like we're in a rock in a hard place. And two of the scripture verses that God has really been speaking to me since I moved my family to Tennessee, and it's been about six months, is that I need to remember Lot's wife, which is symbolic of not looking back, and John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, we know scripture can take and speak to us in many different forms. For me, remembering Lot's wife is don't look back. It's very dangerous when you're driving to continually look in the rearview mirror, is it not? We don't get a whole lot accomplished when we continue to look in the rearview mirror. In much the same way, we cannot be like Lot's wife, continuing to rely on the things that are behind us, the resources that we once that we once held on to. For me, it's my family. For me, it's my surroundings, what's familiar with me familiar to me. All of that has been completely stripped from me, brothers and sisters. God has purposely removed me from where I grew up, from my family, and put me in a land and and around people that I do not know. And not only that, he has me in a season where he has stripped me of all of my resources. He has told me to be still and know that he is God, to cease striving. And Brothers and sisters, for someone like me is so proactive and is very driven and is very hard worker. It is very hard for me to sit still. But that is exactly what God is calling me to do. Every time I try to move forward or try to rely on my own resources, God tells me to stop. 
and it's so hard to trust him in this season. It seems so foggy. But you know, brothers and sisters, when the Spirit of God speaks to you and gives you a conviction, you have to obey. I want to share some scripture with you that he has been sharing with me, and I pray it's encouraging to you. Psalm chapter 32, verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright of heart. Listen to what Psalm 34 says. Psalm 34, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And we have to know that God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You know, I look back over my 16 years of being saved. Never once has God forsaken me. Never once have I missed a bill. Never once has he not provided for my needs. The Bible says he has never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. And I know, I know, brothers and sisters, that many of us are in this season right now where he's telling us to wait upon the Lord. And we're growing tired and we're growing weary in this marathon that he's calling us to run in. And, and for me, I'm, I'm struggling with my purpose. But God is, more, God is more concerned about our character and our relationship with anything. It's about a relationship, not a roadmap. And for me, I want a roadmap. I want to know, God, what are you going to do next? Okay, then after that, what are you going to do? Okay, then what, after that, what are you going to do? But God has put me in a season where I literally have to trust him with every day, every step towards the future. And that's hard. That is extremely hard to do. And sometimes I despair. But listen to what Psalm 34 verse 18 says. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as has a contrite spirit. You know, God knows what we're going through. And there's times I'm getting angry with God and I'm crying out to God, what are you doing? Give me something to go through. And if I had to paint an illustration, I have two doors and I am stuck between two doors. The door behind me is shut and it's a symbol of Lot's wife, not to go back and rely on what's behind me. And before me is a shut door that is not yet opened and it's like a curtain and I want to peek behind that curtain and say, God, wh what are you doing back there? And he's like, nope, don't. I'm still preparing things. I'm working behind the scenes. I'm, I'm doing something that you, you can't look yet. You can't look. You have to trust in me. And there's times I, I want to rely on my own resources. I want to run ahead of God and I want to do what I want to do to bring instant comfort. And I want to peek behind that curtain and say, God, just give me a little clue. What are you up to? And he's saying, no, you can't look. But Psalm 34 says the eyes of the Lord are open to the righteous and his ears are, are toward their cry for help. And so I encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you are going through a season much like I am going through right now, where God is telling you to sit still and wait upon the Lord and lean not on your own understanding and acknowledge me in your, your, all your ways, know that the Lord is near to those who cry out to them, that his ear is inclined to the righteous. That the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Much like a, um, Elijah was a man like us. But he prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. And it did not rain. We have to believe that even if we're in a season of fogginess. Where the door before us is not yet open. It is not even cracked open to give us an idea of what God is doing. We have to press into God. Because he is trying to form our character. He is trying to shape us and mold us as a potter to the clay, into something that he wants us to be. And I don't know, brothers and sisters, what the Lord has for me. I desire to be in full-time ministry. I have worked very hard for the past 12 years in my career. Very hard. Where I was not able to see my, my family and spend time with them. But God has me in a season right now where I am spending more time with my wife and kids. But it's also extremely hard because it's like a person 
who is retired. You know, a person longs to be retired and they have all their financial situations set up and then they sit at home and they go crazy. And why did they go crazy? Because their entire lives they've worked. They've gotten up and they've worked and they just don't know what to do with themselves. And that is much like the season that I'm in right now where I know God is doing something. He's behind the scenes preparing things. And my hope, ultimate hope, is that the rapture is right around the corner and that he just wants me to spend time with my family and my kids or my wife and my kids. But it could very well be that he would tarry and he has something else in store for me. But why do I, why do I bring all this up? I wanted to share with you, brothers and sisters, that the Lord does things in the most unconventional ways. When I try to tell people what the Lord is doing in my life, it doesn't make sense to them. And, for, and, and I second guess myself and we know that the enemy is right there trying to confuse the voice of God with, with his voice. But that is the times we really need to press into God and seek him earnestly in prayer and open up his word and seek him. Not people, not YouTubers, not anything else, not our own resources, not what's behind us, but to seek him. And right now, brothers and sisters, I'm preaching to myself. This message that I'm preaching right now is for me. And I pray it helps you as well. I want to leave you with this verse. As I was teaching my, my uh, son in homeschool, he's had to go through some scripture verses. And every day that he goes through a scripture verse in his homeschool lesson, it always speaks to me. And I want to share what the Lord shared with me. And I hope it's a blessing to you. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. He is near who justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near. Surely the Lord God will help me. Who is he will, who will condemn me? Indeed, they will all grow old like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in the darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Brothers and sisters, I hope this is a blessing to you. And as always, come Lord Jesus.